Hello and welcome to Abintaz. This is where we meet the biggest names of the business. It's that time of the year when we're getting set to welcome the new year and also look back at the last 12 months. To discuss how advertising has been in 2016, we have here with us Mr. Saurabh Varma and Mr. Dheerat Sinha of Leo Burnett South Asia. Welcome to Abitaz. Saurabh, how has been the year so far for you, for, uh, for you at Leo Burnett and uh, for the advertising industry as a whole? I think as far as the advertising industry is concerned, we think it's a, um, it's, it's a situation between the haves and the have-nots. I think the agencies which are doing well are doing very well and the agencies which are not doing well are doing badly uh, and I think that's that's what's happened in the industry. As far as Bunnett is concerned we came off a very strong uh, 2015 and we had very ambitious targets for 2016 uh, and uh, 2016 has been for us a spectacular year. Uh, overall you know we've um, delivered 100% more growth than our commitment. We've improved our margins, we've improved our productivity, and I think the creative work, which is what really matters, uh, is moving in the direction we want. And Bajaj V on a roll still, you've been uh, you know, coming up with new creatives uh, every other week almost. Yeah, I think we've uh, found a unique uh, point of view, which is built around the thought of pride. And in this commuter bike segment where, you know, Bajaj has uh, found it difficult so far, we found a great proposition. Uh, and now, you know, uh, it's really about building on that equity uh, month by month and creating what we call the modern narrative. The Bajaj Week creative has been hailed by almost everybody in advertising. I remember at last year at the FEs, uh, Balki told me about the fact that he, he loved the campaign. This year, I remember when you had a screening of uh, uh, the film, there was Piyush Pandey who was, uh, you know, very moved. So, 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 the, so the, the the creative has worked not just for uh, Bajaj Auto but also for the industry as a whole. Yeah, we are thankful that you know people have found uh, value in the kind of work we are trying to do. Um, I mean, Balki and you know a lot of people have been particularly gracious with their support. Uh, towards this kind of an idea. Uh, I think it's seldom that you know an agency's idea actually leads to the development of the product. And uh, that's where you know the big opportunity was. Uh, for us, the fact that we was, you know, sold 11,000 bikes on the day of the launch, the fact that we are selling more than uh, you know, uh, 20,000 bikes a month at the moment and increased production, uh, the fact that we is now become a platform, we have just launching the 125cc on the back of the V platform, uh, it's become a franchisee, right? Uh, is a huge uh, success. Dheeraj, what, 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 what do you feel uh, about the way the business has been? You've, you've moved into Leo Burnett recently, but you have a, uh, you know, given the fact that you've written books on, on, the, on the way the business is, on uh, uh, the, the country and uh, the way it looks at marketing, what, according to you, has been the biggest uh, uh, development in the year uh, in terms of advertising and marketing? Uh, I think uh, there are a couple of uh, developments which are happening. One is obviously people are coming around to, th to this whole idea that advertising is not just anymore about ads. Right now, that sensibility is, is gaining ground. Uh, there are there's work in pockets where you see that people are trying to change the narrative. Uh, definitely there's a consciousness around it. Now how many people are able to deliver to that consciousness is the, is the thing to be washed out. Uh, but there's a definite change in the mindset to say that what's the new narrative of advertising and, and are we uh, delivering to that. That's one, one shift. I think a lot of the power of advertising in the past few years was driven by e-commerce uh, work etc. Which now to my mind around next year and a few years we'll see a bit of consolidation. right? So you will see uh, fewer people sort of getting momentum. Some of that has been yes. spearheaded by y'all uh, with Amazon. Some mm -hmm. great work done at... Uh... Yeah, because and, and therefore, therefore you will begin to see what's the work which is building the category, which is holding the category drivers, uh, delivering to business versus what's the work which is just spending uh, money and, and feeling good about it. So some of that will, to my mind, will come to terms in, in next year or two. And, and that consolidation is also a, a big sort of a, a factor that we'll see uh, in, in year two. That, those are two big developments, I would say, uh, from business and advertising perspective. What is it that people 
look for from advertising. Over the years, people have, there's always been this debate about creativity and effectiveness, strategy versus uh, you know, great copy. What according to you is, uh, uh, given the fact that ROIs are what everybody is looking for, uh, what, what, what is the focus of, 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 of an advertiser? I think to my mind, uh, I think that debate is settled, right? I mean, what's creative is what drives business. What's creative is what's drive effectiveness, right? I think if people are hiding behind the fact that, oh, you know, this work worked in the market was not creative enough, I think that's just being lazy. Uh, that's, that's not holding the bull by its horns, right? So that debate to my mind is, is pretty much settled. And in our, for example, in our agency, we only, I mean, the KRA for planners is, is the work which comes out of the thinking, right? I mean, we measure ourselves as an agency uh, by the output of the agency, nothing else, absolutely nothing else. Uh, we've seen across clients, right? If the work is good, it has moved business. If the work is not good, it does nothing, right? So we can hide behind our own pretenses, but the truth is that if it's not creative, it neither moves business uh, nor is effective in the marketplace. Yeah, I, I think Pradyuman, just to add, I, I think the opportunity for a strategist is not to just own the brief and then be part of a linear process, but actually to create the work. So when I say create the work, it's no longer about the copy, right? It's about the idea, right? Uh, I think it has always been about the idea, but for a very long time, uh, it became about the end product, which is the film. And the right? smart line, which is there. Right. I think if you look at Bajaj V, right, for example, as, a, as an example, since we were speaking about it, I don't know what the copy is. The film is only a byproduct of what the idea is. And that idea could have come from anybody. So a lot of the, you know, I would say definitive work which is coming out from our agency is getting shaped by the planners, is getting shaped by the account management team. Uh, we've always been frustrated with the whole concept of calling one team creative and therefore implying that the rest of the team is not creative. I mean, it's, you know, fundamentally, an error. There is copy, there is art, there is new product development, there is UX, there is UI, there is, you know, build, there is, uh, you know, uh, strategy, there is integrated account management, but everybody's creative. But does that mean that the change of focus in terms of the way you look at talent, you know, it's no longer, the emphasis is no longer on the creative guys, uh, which, which, was, which used to exist earlier, but it's possibly across the team and you are actually hunting for people who have great ideas and you know they could well be uh, uh, somebody from a finance team. Yeah, it could be, right? Uh, if you really look at Apollo 11, which is I think one of the bravest initiatives that we started, a uh, team of innovators, right? Um, last year we had 87 IITNs apply, applying for uh, a position in Apollo 11. Now it's never happened in our industry. And it's happening because essentially what we are building out are prototypes. What we are doing are solving problems. And how many did you hire? We hired four of them. And they've stayed on? They've stayed on. That, that's, that's, I think, more important than the hiring of them, right? So I, I think if you really look at the kind of people, you know, we, we are attracting, um, we, we've, in a sense, it's, uh, you know, renaissance. Um, it's renaissance because people want to create, people want to solve problems, the young people. They don't want to be a copywriter or an art director, they want to solve the problem. And if the, if the predominant narrative is around solving the problem, you're essentially in a good place, I think. Advertising doesn't really pay very much, right? You all don't, the salaries outside are much higher than uh, what, what an advertising agency pays. So, so are they really attracted to you all? I think you have to be competitive in terms of the salaries that you have. But I think a lot of people are driven by purpose. A lot of the young people are driven by the opportunity to create something new. They want to believe in something which is bigger than themselves. Is that really so? We think so. Yeah. And uh, I mean, the fact that there are four IITNs here, right, tells you that that thinking really works. And you're looking at 60 lakh rupees sal salary, et cetera, et cetera. No, you don't need to have that kind of money to attract great talent. But Pradeeman, you'll have, I mean, you'll have people who will chase money in the market, right? And I personally think that too much has been made of the fact that advertising doesn't attract talent. In fact, we've not had any dearth of talent when we are going out to recruit for all kinds of positions, right? From junior to senior, we go to MICA, we get the best talent 
applying to us, uh, even amongst planners, right? There are planners who are working overseas, other markets, they are happy to join us, uh, right? You have to look a little harder, right? You look a little harder, you have to show them a culture that you're building, uh, right? Uh, but we are able to find talent which is T-shaped, right? Which does creative, which does strategy, but also has a semiotic background, has a technology background, has a shopper background. And we're able to find that talent. So I think it's been made too much of. I, I think the larger question is what's your ambition, right? What does your agency stand for? What's the culture? And I think if the culture is, listen, you know, uh, backfit a strategy because I have written a film, they don't want to be part of that culture anymore. I think they want to be part of a culture which helps them create, which helps them solve a problem. Uh, if they are able to essentially, I mean, Apollo 11, for example, as a team has no designations. And it's refreshing when you have no designations, right? Everybody is a creator. As we turn to 2017, do you think that the emphasis on the film, which was uh, which which has existed and which has uh, uh, been so for the last uh, decade and a half, is, is shifting to other forms of advertising? For instance, activations out of home, and of course, uh, uh, digital gaining ground. I think the question is not of. I mean, again, it's a wrong question, right? I, I think fundamentally, the question is: Are you going to solve the problem? Uh, and if it requires a film, so be it. Now, even if, for example, you create a platform or you create a branded utility, let's say an app, how are you going to tell people about the app? What is the narrative? So different media will play different role in driving success of the content. The reason why I ask this question is that once upon a time and once upon a recent time is people, people would definitely need a TVC, okay, and you know that was a very in, in necessary ingredient of the entire marketing plan. Has that changed? Are, the, are people that willing to look at other forms of uh, communication that would be possibly cheaper or possibly be more effective? I think more effective, absolutely. Um, I think if you look at Bajaj V itself, I think we spend one fifth amount of money than we would have had if we had a traditional launch. But because of the power of the idea, I'm saying how strong is a narrative where you do a launch of a film uh, as the launch of a film, rather than it being seen on television. Um, and there are many ideas of that nature, which in today's day and age, essentially what do you need a piece of content to do today in, in today's day and age? And how is that shaped differently than it was in the past? In the past, you had a great idea, you put it on television and people embraced it, right? In today's day and age, you can get people to play with it, which means I can get people to engage with it, uh, spend time with it, share it. And of course, it needs to, needs to lead to buying. So if you have play, buy and share, all three happening with whatever you create, you've done a good job. Here's what's your view. I think what's happened is that uh, the source of the idea has become mobile, right? And there's mobility in that. So it can the source of the idea can start on digital and can then go on to television. It can start within the product, right? So in the case of Bajaj V, marketing is embedded in the product. So the product itself is part of your advertising. I think that is a fundamental shift. Earlier you said that the idea has to emanate out of a television commercial. That has changed in a, in a big way. It can emanate from an app, it can emanate from a product, it can emanate from a digital thought, from an activation, etc. But which is not to say that television going out of fashion in India, right? I mean, we are still a big mass uh, media country and we will continue to do so. I think television is here to stay. But the nature of television advertising is going to change because it has perhaps a reference to something which is running on digital at the same point in time. It has a reference to a product. It has a reference to an app that you need to experience on your mobile phone to be able to complete the experience. So that nature is changing, right? A. I think B, I, I think the, just to add on to that thought, you know, like your response in today's day and age could become the stimulus. So for example, if you do something, let's say at an airport, right, with a brand, and you see 10 people's reactions, that piece of content can become the TVC. So it's not necessary that an idea is to emerge or start off as television, right? It can, of course, play out in television because television can give you reach, right, uh, which is still needed in a country like ours. But the question is, what is the ro role? Yeah. And the other, the other thing we undermine is the role of video, right? I mean, 
what what we learn to do television as is essentially video right if you look at the heart of uh, content on on digital it's all video right so essentially video is not going out it's just the role of tv as a medium which is changing absolutely you know when we entered 2016 and and on the back of the fact that there was measurement available for uh, rural media consumption the buzz was that rural is going to go grow in a big way do you think that has happened at all in 2016 i think my sense is that rural uh, as a customer uh, consumer and rural as a market has definitely grown the expectations there have definitely grown i think we as marketers haven't kept pace with the change in the rural audience right a lot of rural marketing still is very cut and dry uh, based on very traditional uh, sort of assumptions right and i did some bit of work in the rural market last time people still taking video vans and showing them videos whether our customers are saying that we see videos on youtube on a mobile phone on a daily basis why are you coming and showing me videos right uh, come and and do something with my soil help me do something with the pricing uh, at the mandi etc etc right if you talk to rural marketers they would they would tell you a lot of the marketing support system has in kept pace uh, with the changing dynamics of the rural customer i think rural has grown uh, i think uh, rural is delivering to its promise i think the marketing system and the and the and the ecosystem needs to uh, brush itself up because a lot of people's idea of rural still is a is a a guy with a pagdi a yellow pagdi on a tractor and that image needs to change so and then that possibly exists in the entire ecosystem whether it's uh, with the marketers or with the agencies or wherever and are you are you are you doing anything about it at at leo bonnet for instance are you looking at equipping uh, the team with the talent which is uh, aware of what is happening in rural india so whenever we do project for example uh, not rural but uh, i mean if we run uh, small town projects etc we go out there we do very different uh, mechanics of probing so we would for example hang around with youth look at their mobile phones see what they are consuming rather than do standard focus group discussions or depth interviews etc so we have those uh, toolkits mechanisms that we um, that we use to delve deeper into people but the the mechanisms are similar is the same that you would use in in urban market the idea is to go out there and figure it out rather than pontificate from kolaba or or lower peril lower peril so sort of what according to you were the stand out campaign uh, or stand out advertising uh, uh, activity done in the year so i can only tell you what i thought were my favorites i think share the load was an incredible campaign uh i think it was an idea rather than a film uh which is which is game changing uh, i think khali right uh, which is uh, uh, gujarat ambuja was a great campaign um won a lot of awards too yeah and I, again you know it's a power of a narrative right fantastic campaign um I think Bajaj V obviously was uh, for for us uh, a huge campaign. These are the three which, in my mind, stand out as uh, genuine work on real brands uh, to solve real issues. Anything that was very disappointing, according for you? You thought you know it was a great opportunity lost. I think there are opportunities everywhere, and I think everybody is trying. Right? Uh, one of the things we never do is uh, comment on anybody else's work. uh because we don't know the context in which it's got shaped but i think everybody is trying uh and the 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 only question is who's more paranoid and who's going to change themselves to bring about the change you had what about you what is your view i think uh, one of the fascinating campaigns which hasn't been talked about much is the i thought the ola boot ride campaign right which, which happened in chennai i don't know whether there was an agency support or not but I in my mind brands which build a bit of purpose uh, in the society which live up to uh, the the order of the times uh, I mean we all have uh, time at our hand to think about campaigns and pontificate but when there is a situation uh, and how the brand reacts to it uh, and does it react in a positive way does it do good without any selfish uh, sort of a uh, end uh, in its mind and therefore the whole ola boat campaign which happened it wasn't a campaign it was a it was a real intervention uh during the chennai flight i think that that stands out for me for the new kind of marketing and the new kind of sensibility that marketers and advertising people need to have uh towards brand building which is not just what is my benefit what am i selling but what am i adding back to the society what is my purpose why why do i exist but sometimes you one does get a feeling that marketers and advertisers are doing this more to get uh, to create the buzz around social media and earn brownie points do you think that that's a fair charge I mean in 
you know, India is a country where anything you do, there'll be two polarizing views, right? Some people will say excellent, some people will say will try and pull you down. You can't walk away from that. But I mean, if you actually lowered, uh, say, 20 boats or 50 real boats and help people out, I think it's real and genuine. If you get some bit of buzz uh, on the back of it, I have no quarrel with that. And that's good for the business. I, I would say that's what contextual advertising is about. It's your speed to react to the market. And, you know, uh, I'm sure enough content got created right and shared uh, you know on social media why wouldn't even be that engineered to begin with why would we feel shy about the fact that doing good should not get brand benefit as we move ahead to 2017 what according to you is uh, uh, the way things will go for uh, our fraternity in terms of work in terms of what people uh, uh, will will create a buzz will what, what advertisers are looking for? I think one narrative which is going to play out in 2017 will be clients focusing a lot on combining the power of mediums. So you will start to see a lot of integrated pitches in play. Uh, you will start seeing clients combining their digital uh, specialist agencies with their mainline agencies. Uh, so that's one narrative we think will play. Uh, for us, it has, uh, it has uh, implications. Um, Especially when you look at publicist communication, which is, you know, Leo Burnett, uh, Saatchi, Publicis and MSNL as a group, uh, you will see a lot of cross collaboration which will start to happen. Uh, for us, it will be really about putting digital at the center of all these agencies. It's really about putting um, what we call uh, activation uh, at the center of all these agencies and putting production at the center of all these agencies. Uh, but, but, but with the publicist group, you have a sapin nitro, which which exists, and uh, you know now with Razor Wish also uh, combining forces. At the same time, you have uh, with Leo Burnett, you also have a digital arm. So so they will both work together, or will it all be pooled as uh, into creating one big uh, uh, digital firm? Obviously, they all have uh, different roles to play. Uh, so we really, uh, you know, divide the digital spectrum into three parts. One is called the digital marcom. Uh, the second is called digital experiences. And third is a large transformational enterprise projects. So for us, the first two have to be done by the creative agencies where digital has to be mainline, right? It has to be front and center of your offering. The third part, which are the massive build you know, company transformational projects is where Sapient comes into the picture. That's when we will unleash the power of Sapient for our clients. Dheeraj, what, what according to you is what uh, will work next year? It's always a tricky question, right? Because then you have to invent three trends which will work in 2017. But I think there are some trajectories, right? Which I think will continue, will get more accentuated. Uh, at least for the, for the advertising industry, I feel one big trajectory is the comeback of client's desire for the agency to be an upstream partner in thinking. A lot of, for example, a lot of time that Saurav and I spend nowadays with clients is helping them shape their thinking on marketing, business, etc. Right? And that, that desire is, is huge and agencies need to rise up uh, to be able to uh, deliver to that because there are many players who are vying for that. And the, whole and, and the, and the, and the clients are looking <coughs> from agencies oh, for, they for they advice? Are, they are, they are, they're looking for direction, they're looking for confidence, they're looking for uh, how to solve problems together in a collaborative way, uh, right? And this whole crib that, you know, agencies are not in boardrooms anymore. They can't be anything far from truth uh, than that. So that's one So one the big, big B-school boys are looking for people from advertising to... I, I don't know if it's about B-school versus advertising, it's about marketplace reality. And, and because there's so much flux in the market and because you are getting into territories, I mean, there are no global formats or templates to tell you how to build businesses in emerging markets, how to tell millions of people to get on and sign on an app and get into uh, e-commerce, how to get millions of people to sign up for an insurance uh, program when they know that insure, when they've never uh, sort of bought into the air. So the, the questions that this marketplace throws up don't have answers in the B-school methodology either which ways. And therefore, what uh, my sense is what business leaders are seeking is collective judgment, wisdom, uh, and experience to solve those problems. And that's definitely a huge uh, sort of a need, desire, gap. Uh, and I think there are enough agencies who are equipped uh, to answer that, but that's something that we must 
uh, take note of and move in, right? That's one uh, aspect. I think in terms of work and the kind of work, obviously more and more work you will see where marketing and advertising is embedded in the product, right? Where there are ideas, uh, innovations, uh, which are lived by the product or at least into an initiative or an engagement program and not just an ad. So uh, what you say is, is no more good enough. What you do uh, is increasingly becoming very, very important. And whether you do it in form of a product, you do it in form of an activation, uh, the way you do it is, 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 is okay, but you have to get out there and make something happen. So the whole engagement driven uh, way of solving problems will gain more and more currency. You'll see more examples of that. And the third thing is this whole idea of purpose, right? I'm, I mean, what what uh, Baba Ramdev has taught uh, to to many many expert marketers, right? Of saying that poor want purpose, right? I mean, the the masses they they are buying yoga and and biscuits and cornflakes and and uh, dandruff shampoo all at the same time uh, from the same guy, uh, right? And that's a big big learning and it's a big jolt to a lot of traditional marketers. But the idea of purpose of saying I am part of you, I am with you. Uh, right, you'll grow with me. Uh, that's the message that people want to hear from most corporations, uh, most brands. So I would say those those three would continue to gain momentum. Before we wind up, uh, Saurabh, if you have to make this, since it's the time for Christmas, uh, if you had to make one wish to Santa that you know you would like uh, to happen for the a &M fraternity and for the industry, what would it be? I hope we change ourselves before we ask clients to change themselves. Neeraj, what about you? I think uh, right now everybody is hoping that demonetization turns out on the U-curve. So, so I think that's that's the December wish. Right, great. Thank you. Then thank you for being on Advertise. Thank you.